This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the ischemic bowel disease. As its name indicates ischemic. Ischemic means when there is a loss of blood supply to a certain area that will become ischemic and that area is the bowel here. So ischemic bowel disease. Now first of all the blood supply of the GIT it consists of mainly three arteries. You all know that it is the celiac arteries the superior mesenteric arteries and the inferior mesenteric arteries these are the blood supply of the git means these arteries and their branches now basically what happens that our small intestine and the colon they are supplied by these arteries but also they are supplied by the collateral branches and due to this collateral branch the small intestine and colon they can you can say they can cope with the condition of the transient blood loss means for a blood loss for a small time they can cope with that condition or they are resistant to the transient blood loss clear now uh, if there is a damage and if there is acute blood loss occurs so what happens that the damage will occur and damage if it is more severe resulting in the ischemia and the infarction may occur so on the basis of the severity of the infarction we have the three types of the infarction number first is the mucosal infarction number first is the mucosal infarction this mucosal infarction as its name indicate that it is limited to the mucosal layer first of all i am telling you there are four layers of the git number first for suppose this is your mucosal layer clear then this is your submucosal layer the third layer is the muscularis propria and the fourth and the last one that is the serosa clear now in this the mucosal infarction we have this mucosa and the infarction it is limited to the mucosa clear and this is the innermost layer so the infarction is limited to this layer that's what is called as the mucosal infarction then the second one infarction that is called as the mural infarction mural infarction mural infarction it this infarction involves the two layers that is the mucosa as well as the submucosa clear so if this is involved this is the mucosal infarction then if both layers the mucosa and submucosa they are involved that is called as the mural infarction clear now the third one and the last one that is the transmural infarction transmural infarction it is basically involving the third and the fourth layer that is the muscularis propria clear and the fourth one is the serosa so if all the layers they are involved it may result in the it will be resulting in the transmural infarction so here is your this is your transmural infarction transmural infarction involving all the layers so with this if it only if it is only involving the mucosa it is the mucosal involving mucosa submucosa mural mucosa submucosa and all the layers muscularis propria serosa that is called as the transmural infarction clear now i am telling you the causes of the acute arterial obstruction because obviously the blood supply is lost in the ischemia ischemia occur because of the loss of blood supply so there are the causes of acute arterial obstruction so what are the causes one by one i am telling you these causes first one is the atherosclerosis means the deposition of the plaques in the arteries then we have the aortic aneurysms clear then we have the hypercoagulable states means in which the in which the coagulation 
is more hypercoagulation occurs due to which the arteries may be uh, coagulate and they may be blocked so blood supply to the certain area will be also lost then we also have the use of contraceptives this may also result in the ischemia to certain uh, area or ischemia to the bowel region then we have the you can say ischemic or you can say intestinal hypoperfusion it may occur due to cardiac failure obviously cardiac failure may occur so the blood supply will be compromised or in the shock or you can say in the dehydration there will be hypoperfusion clear then we have the systemic vascular diseases that for example the polyarthritis nodosa may occur and we have the neoplasms we have the cirrhosis all they can compromise the blood supply clear so these are the causes of the acute arterial obstruction any problem up till now okay no problem now we are moving on towards the pathogenesis of this disease means how the uh, means disease is affecting and how it is causing the ischemia how this ischemia is causing the damage so here we are moving on with the pathogenesis pathogenesis includes the initial hypoxic injury clear initial hypoxic injury it is occurring in the uh, first of all what happens that the whenever the vascular uh, compromise occur so at the onset of the vascular compromise there will be initial hypoxic injury but this injury is very uh, to up to the very small extent means a very small damage some amount of the damage may occur why because we know that the epithelial cells they are resistant to the transient hypoxia no epithelial cells of the intestine they are resistant to the transient hypoxia so that's why there is initially the less hypoxic injury occur but obviously when there is hypoxia occur so there are there will be uh, inflammatory mediators will be produced reactive oxygen species will be produced and the certain damaging substances they may also be produced clear in this uh, phase then we have the next phase that is called as the reperfusion injury now most of the injury means the greatest injury occur in this phase in the reperfusion injury why this occur and how this occur simply is that for suppose this is your area of the necrosis or ischemia here the ischemia has occurred why because of the blood supply this blood supply has lost what happens the reperfusion injury now the collaterals this is a collateral that is developed and this starts to supply the blood clear now what happens that i already told you due to initial hypoxic injury there is development of the certain reactive oxygen species the neutrophils inflammatory mediators harmful substances they start to develop in the blood they are increased in the blood in our blood so what happens that this collateral blood supply when it supplies this to the ischemic area so it also contains the reactive oxygen species neutrophils inflammatory mediators and the harmful substances so this blood is not I means favorable for this ischemic area this is more harmful for this ischemic area and due to which what happens that the condition starts to worsen clear so that's why there is a greatest damage in the reperfusion injury because of those uh, mediators and those substances that are present in the blood due to initial hypoxic injury clear so this is the pathogenesis now we are moving on to the variables of the ischemic bowel disease variables of ischemic bowel disease simple is that first of all is the severity what is the severity of the disease or severity of the vascular compromise then our second one is the time or you can say how long this injury has occurred or how long the blood supply has compromised for how long time you have to measure it if it is for a longer time damage will be more clear then we have the uh, after the time severity and if the major blood vessel is involved major blood vessel 
रिमेंबर दिस दैट इफ द मेजर ब्लड वेजल इज इन्वॉल्व द डैमेज विल बी सिवियर क्लियर नाउ दीज आर द वेरिएबल्स ऑफ द इंफ्लेमेटरी बावल डिजीज नाउ वी आर मूविंग ऑन टूवर्ड्स द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द हाइपॉक्जिक इंजरी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द हाइपॉक्जिक इंजरी हेयर इज द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ हाइपॉक्जिक इंजरी वॉट हैपन्स इन दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मीन्स If the vascular compromise has occurred, so first, we, what type of the areas will be affected? So first of all, the water shed areas they are affected. Now, what are water shed areas? Basically, water shed areas you can say that those areas where the two artery arteries they end, or that is supplied by the two uh, arteries or the distal or the you can say end arteries. they are supplied by the end arteries or distal arteries uh, by the two arteries it is supplied by the two arteries for suppose we have the splenic flexure so this splenic flexure here you can see that superior mesenteric artery ends here and the inferior mesenteric artery it ends here means where the one artery ends and the other artery starts you can say or other artery ends it's called as the Uh, water shed areas one of the area is the splenic flexure where the superior mesenteric and the inferior mesenteric circulation ends clear then we have the so here is the first one that is the splenic flexure second one area is the sigmoid colon sigmoid colon and the rectum now here in the sigmoid colon and the rectum we have the mesenteric pedundal as well as the iliac circulation ends clear here the superior and the mes uh, inferior mesenteric circulation end and here the mesenteric pedundal as well as the iliac circulation it ends in this area that's why these areas they are more prone towards the uh, ischemic injury clear because here they are, these arteries they end at this region so first of all is the distribution is first one is this now the second distribution i am drawing it here second distribution is along the intestinal crypts the distribution of the intestinal capillaries along the intestinal crypts now i am making here the intestinal crypts you all know these are the intestinal crypts means these are the you can say intestinal glands now what happens that this is your artery that is running along the intestinal crypt now before it takes a hairpin band this band like this band it empties into the venule clear it ends into the venule so due to which what happens that this area the surface of the crypts they are more prone to the ischemia clear due to this the surface are more prone to the ischemia so here because they are drain into the venules before making a hairpin loop that is uh, means drain into the venule now due to which the surface of the Uh, crypts they are more prone to the ischemia this is a disadvantage but the most important advantage of this type of the distribution is that that we the main important thing is that we have the stem cells that are located in the base of the crypts here the in the base of the crypts we have the stem cells and in the base of the crypts we also have a rich blood supply clear so due to which if there is okay for example there is damage or there is a, i mean the ischemia and the surface of this crypt so we have still we have the stem cells these stem cells they divide replicate and what they do they replace the uh, injured area with the newly formed epithelial cells so that's why this is very important that our stem cells must be saved if this area is damaged if stem cells will be replicating and will be uh, means uh, preventing uh, you can say forming the new cells and the injury can be recovered but if the stem cells they are injured so obviously there will be no recovery 
clear so this thing is clear about you that how uh, means how the stem cells they are protected by the blood supply and uh, why the means uh, more prone the surface is more prone to the ischemic injury so this is about the distribution of the hypoxic injury that it occurs in the watershed areas and the distribution of the intestinal crypts so we have to uh, we have discussed about the uh, introduction of the ischemic bowel disease we discussed about the infarctions about the acute uh, means causes of the arterial obstruction pathogenesis of this disease and the variables of the inflammatory bowel disease and the distribution of hypoxic injury is still some uh, part of this uh, means ischemic bowel disease is remaining that is the microscopic feature morphologic feature in the clinical features that we will be discussing in our next lecture in the part 2 so thank you so much for watching the video and if you have any question you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz